Alrighty, how's it going guys? We're going to be doing Lab 5.2 continued on from the previous Star Wars Troopers one. And this one has to do with bouncing sprites. And what it's really going to be is just a further push for what cloning can do and how you can really utilize it to do some fun stuff. Um, so what we're going to do is kind of just follow through like we normally do. Uh, so we'll start with creating uh, a snap program as a single sprite and we'll choose between the available costumes. I'll probably just make something even uh, when the green flag is clicked, the sprite should go to the center of the stage, pick a random direction, and start moving in the chosen direction. So this is something we've done before, but I'll go through just to get us all on the same page. Um, if the sprite hits a wall, it should bounce off the wall and keep moving. So with that in mind, um, this one's kind of a shorter project. So instead of like really planning stuff out or doing a planning worksheet, we'll just kind of go straight into it here. So the first part is we already, you know, you start out with the original sprite. Uh, we can go to costumes as we've done before. Uh, you could pick a picture, you can download some pictures. I'm just going to draw a circle just to have one. And this is good enough for me, right? Um, and then go into scripts like we've seen a million times before using when the green arrow is clicked is what it asks us to do. And asking it to pick a random direction. So uh, I saw this is actually pretty useful. It points towards there's already a random position. Um, and when we click here, we can see direction up here, 90, and we can prove it works if you just click it a bunch of times. And I even kind of made an oval so we can kind of actually see a difference in change uh, of where it's facing. So we have the point to the random direction, and then it's as easy as we've done before. Uh, we can actually just move 10 steps, and now we just move 10 steps in the direction it's, it's facing. And we'll actually see it kind of go in all different directions because I'm switching it every time as well. So to continue to keep moving, we're actually going to go to just, we can, for now, we can just kind of do a forever loop. And we click it. Now we see it points a random direction. Um, it's actually so far off. One of the, the other things it asks as well was to go ahead and reset it. So we'll do that. And now every time we click it, we can see that it is changing a different direction and going forever. And kind of like the third or fourth part to this was making sure it bounced off the edge. And there's also a really convenient uh, Snap block for that as well. Uh, if on edge bounce, uh, this actually goes inside this forever loop with it. So when it's moving, it needs to check every single time, uh, just like a lot of other if statements. And so we'll go ahead and put it right here in the forever loop. So this is kind of like the first part of what it was asking us to do. This is kind of what we're really used to. Uh, this is kind of just getting the setup going. And we see it here, and anytime we restart it, it should, yep, go kind of in a different angle or a different direction. Um, it, it's bouncing a little bit before the edge, but that's that's fine. We kind of get the concept, right? So now that we got this part done, we can go ahead and go back to the lab, double check that we've hit all the points. And I believe we have. And now it wants us to modify the program to be controlled by the stage rather than the sprite itself. And so for this one specifically, I know a lot of times people will just go through all, kind of go to the rubric, just get those points done. Um, but this was definitely more of a learning aspect. So definitely try to run through them to kind of just one at a time. I wouldn't even necessarily read all the way to the end just so you can kind of get it through. So that's what we'll do. Modify the program to be controlled by the stage rather than the sprite itself. When the space bar is pressed, so we're going to move from the green flag, the stage should broadcast a message that triggers the sprite's movement. Pressing the space bar again should restart the sprite's movement, including the new speed, new direction. So this is something you guys also may be used to doing um, is actually um, using this kind of as a method. So what we'll do is we'll go to stage. We'll say when spacebar is pressed and we'll broadcast something like, I don't know, start bouncing. Start bouncing. So when that's pressed and then instead of the green flag here, we'll go off that. We can kind of throw that away. And when this broadcast is received, start bouncing, you can start bouncing. So now the green arrow won't work, but spacebar will. And you guys see me pressing spacebar, but you can acknowledge uh, every time I press spacebar, something different's happening. So we, we're now at the exact same spot. We're taking a baby step so we know everything's working and we're not guessing what could be going wrong. And it all seems to be A-OK -okay so far. So now we will go to the third part. What would you need to do to add a second bouncing sprite to the program? What about 10 sprites, 100 sprites? And this is something good to note too, because yeah, easily we could just hard code another second one in there. But what if someone asked you to do 100 sprites, right? Uh, you will kind of think back to the previous lab we did, uh, the Star Wars Troopers one, where we're able to just duplicate a bunch of them. So 
if you want to, I would pause the, pause the video right here. Maybe think if you can do it, maybe try to go for it. Uh, using the previous lab, you can go look at that code, everything. Um, and if you've done that, I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with the rest of the lab now. What happened if you wanna change the speed of all the bouncing sprites in the program after you've created 100? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we're gonna use cloning, like mentioned. So instead of using when I receive or, or using a broadcast, what we're actually gonna do is use the clone here. And so instead of start bouncing, we will just create a clone of. Uh, you could obviously go through and uh, you know do a for loop and create a hundred at a time right now, uh, but we'll just do every time I hit space, I'll just create a new one just to show we have. When I receive start bouncing, so instead of that, it's simple enough that when I start as a clone. So every time we hit sorry space, there should be a new version of it going. This is obviously looking pretty uh, crowded. Something else you see is kind of weird is this original one is not really doing anything because only when you start as a clone is it actually hiding or is it actually running. So what we may want to do, uh, make this a little bit more solid program, is actually hide this original. Uh, right. So we'll stop it. Go here. We're going to create a clone of Sprite. And we'll do something originally what I think most people would do. And then we'll talk about what else you could do with that. I believe it's in control. We can actually just tell a sprite to hide. Tell a sprite to. And it's in looks, I think. Is there just hide? Yep. So now when it, space first pressed, it's hiding it. But what you're seeing is actually every time it's hiding all of them and I'm pressing space for a bunch of times, and no more are coming up. So it's actually just hiding the previous one every time because it's becoming Sprite to my knowledge. So what we're gonna do is before we create the clone, or I'm thinking even actually we hit it so then it can't create another clone because it's hidden. What we'll do is we will tell the Sprite to show itself before. Uh, and there's a bunch of ways to do this. It's just one way that came off the top of my head. So this way, when I go to create a clone of Sprite, I'm not creating an invisible clone because I believe that's what's happening uh, when this is going on. It's kind of hard to tell when you're working with invisible stuff. Uh, but now when I click spacebar, there we go. Because it, it shows it just for a second, even before we can even see it, and it rehides it. And now we can do all this kind of stuff. Now, this could also be confusing as to what exactly is uh, you know going on. So now we can do some more fun stuff like let's change the size of every clone and make them all different shapes and colors and stuff. So what I will do is go to the actual clone itself. We can go ahead and get rid of the broadcasting and all this stuff. And we can do stuff like, uh, what, one option would be like to fill out a list of things you really want it to be so you can just cycle them through. Um, something I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna create some costumes and I'm just gonna use randomness for all of it because it's not something uh, that needs to be one specific thing or another. Um, once again, you can upload basketballs, soccer balls, any kind of real thing. I'm just gonna make some circles just because it's easy for me. and. Just, uh, Power wraps with that. Oh, and I, I click it. So this this will be another one of mine, and this will be pretty easy to tell uh, which one it is. So we'll start with a green one. We see it's going like that. Now, if we go to scripts, and when you're created as a clone, we can go ahead and switch to a costume. Which costume? Obviously, you could go ahead and specifically do it. But what we will do is look for. I believe it's in control, and I think it's probably operations. Pick a random number between one and we made three. So I'll pick a number between one and three. And now we stop it. Every time it should pick a random one. And uh, looks like when you do a few more, it gets closer to random. But you see about a third of each of them is a different one. And now also we can change the size. So we'll do something like do change size by 10, set size to 100%, and we'll do the same pick random. And this time I'll go between one and 100. Maybe, actually maybe we'll even go like 10 and 90, uh, cause you know, one will be quite small and 100 will be a little bit bigger. So we'll, do, we'll leave some wiggle room for it. Um, and we'll stop it again and we'll start it. And now you see them really at all kinds of different sizes and shapes. And if someone asked me to make a million of them, it would make no difference because I'm using cloning. And so I believe it's actually 22. I think it keeps track of you here for it. Um, so we'll go back to the lab just to kind of look at the last bit of it. The part two 
I think I actually went over it all because I kind of wanted to do it a little bit more naturally. Uh, modifying your program, so instead of a single sprite, you're creating a clone. When I start as a clone, use in, in doing that instead of broadcasting when I receive. There's some extra credit, and it's kind of exactly what I went over, how to change the speed, color, size individually, even though they're all clones, we can still change them at the individual level there. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this clears some stuff up for you guys and good luck finishing the lab.